Okay, so hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Fall Global. This is where we connect with global first entrepreneurs and remote work experts from all around the world to share their experiences and knowledge. Our guest today is Alex Hernandez, uh, co-founder at JobGazer. Um, Alexander, uh, Alex, I'm sorry, thanks for joining us today. Hello, Vitz. Thank you very much for having me, and I'm really looking forward to to sharing um, everything I've I've learned about remote work. Yeah, yeah, and it, 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 in fact, it is fantastic to have you on the show. And before we dive into the details, could you maybe share a bit more about your journey itself and what led you to 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 co-found JobGazer? Yeah, um, actually, um, when I finished my studies 13, 14 years ago. I moved to London and because I'm French originally, um, and I started to work in recruitment, really traditional um, head hunting business. Been there for nine years in total. I moved to Paris to open the branch. And just before COVID, I had enough um, of that job. I had enough of Paris, quit my job. And COVID arrived, lockdown arrived. And to make things you know, a bit more funny, I actually met Juan, my actual co-founder, online. Someone introduced me to Juan. We had two Zoom calls, uh, probably, you know, two two two-hour Zoom calls. And we clicked on very similar vision on uh, how can we help people to find a much more meaningful job. Because, you know, your job is where you spend most of your time most of of your day. And without meeting each other, without knowing each other, we decided to launch JobGether in March 2020. Um, Four years later, we're still working together. It took us a year and a half to actually physically meet. And today, um, JobGether is a full remote company, uh, 26 people. Uh, I think it's uh, 13 nationalities across nine countries. And... Uh, four continents. So, uh, Job Gazer has been at the forefront of the remote work revolution, as we found out. <laughs> so, in your experience, how have how have you seen the landscape of um, global hiring and remote work evolve? Especially considering your your background in recruitment and building like teams in different countries, can you can you uh, walk us through this uh, evolution? Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe just to let you know what we do to understand, you know, um, um, sure why yeah. I can get you know all this vision and data. Data so today we are uh, the largest job search engine dedicated to remote jobs on jobgether.com you have um, 200,000 full remote job postings um, from all over the world. Um, So really, COVID was like, in a way, starting point or like a pushing point. I don't think COVID actually changed, um, you know, the way we work, but really accelerated that change to a much more flexible, um, you know, work. Um, it would happen anyway, but maybe in 30 years. With COVID, in one week, suddenly everyone had to work from home, which was an absolute mess. No one was ready. We didn't have a good setup. We had kids running around and screaming behind us. You know that. I also experienced that. It was terrible. So the first idea that people had of remote work was really bad. Still, four years later, we still see people comparing remote work with lockdown, which is completely wrong. However, in that time, during you know the, the beginning of the, the of the year 2020, companies and people realized that we don't have to go to an office, we don't have to commute for two hours every day to be productive to do our job. And that was a big you know shift in 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 in, in the paradigm of what you know, work is really. And of course, when COVID was over, when lockdown was over, a lot of people thought, why am I living in in San Francisco paying like crazy prices? Or why am I living in in the big capital? Um, I have kids that I want a garden, I want a better life, I want to be close to my parents. So a lot of people started moving house. And they realized they could earn the same money, 
people living in a much more affordable, you know, part of, of the country, or even people moved abroad. I actually moved abroad. I was in Paris and now I'm in Spain. And at the beginning, companies were okay with that. Um, and it was, you know, okay, let's do that. People work from home and it's, and it's um, you know, working well. Now, four years later, we could see some, some companies going back, asking for return, you know, to office. Um, and there are a lot of talks about, should we keep remote work? Um, should we not? You have on one side talents, you know, employees like you and me realizing that they have a much better work-life balance. They can be spending more time with the kids. They can be doing a job from, you know, the, the, the garden. Um, and they just don't want to go back to the office. And on the other side, you have companies, you know, especially tech companies, I would say, who had the most remote workers. They're just realizing, you know, the economic situation has been difficult in the last two years. Um, management was really not ready for remote management. And I think bad manager really came to light, you know. Um, and... Remote work today, I think, is the easy target. We are not selling enough. Okay, that's because the sales team is working remotely. We are not doing this enough. We are this. And I think it's a perfect excuse. And that's why a lot of companies are asking for the people to come back to the office. They normally don't really have data to back it up. However, we can see a lot more data to back up that remote work is working. You know, people are not, uh, le- are not losing productivity. People are happier, it's easier to hire people, it's easier to keep people. And now we are in a bit of a situation where there's a bit of a war between companies and talents. And what we can see, not many yet, but growing every day, companies understanding that remote work, yes, does work. And they are really winning the battle of talents. They are keeping their people. They are doing you know, much better than companies asking for people to come back to the office. Um, so it's a really interesting time, um, and uh, yeah, we really see that from from you know all the job that, that we scrap, all the companies that we're talking to, uh, and I think it will be interesting for a few more years. But definitely, remote work is here to stay. Hundred <laughs> percent. And um, as far as I understand, your your platform addresses the challenges of job seekers related to the, the lack of a single global job search hub and yes. as well as like a kind of transparency on flexibility of companies you know and flexibility of conditions so could, could you could you maybe share how job gather tackles these pain points and what what is the difference between uh job gather and other remote uh, job boards yes really good point and next that's actually the reason why we decided to launch that platform. We realize you have the big job platform, the LinkedIn, the Indeed, you know, the big ones. They're not really made for remote work. Uh, and I will explain why. And then you already had some really specialized remote job platforms. Most of them were US only. And we with a really little number of job postings. If you want to be a job platform, you need to have all the jobs. Why I'm saying the traditional LinkedIn indeed job platforms are not really made for remote is, I will take you example. Today, let's say you are looking for a job. You are based in Ukraine. You are going to type on LinkedIn, um, you know, whatever, um, software engineer, Ukraine remote. You will only see uh, Ukrainian companies hiring people remotely from Ukraine. Don't get, don't get me wrong. You can find a really good job with a Ukrainian company. But as a remote worker, why limiting yourself to work for a company from your country where you could have access to companies from a lot of countries able to hire you from your country? So it was missing this point of, you know, remote work is a, is a global market. How can I access that? And people were frustrated. I'm based in, you know, Colombia, I don't want to limit myself to Colombian companies, you know, and so on. So what we did is um, on JobGether, when you look for a job, you will be typing software engineer, Ukraine, and you will see maybe 500, 1,000, 2,000 um, remote software engineer positions 
from companies able to hire you from Ukraine. The company can be Japanese, can be German, can be Polish, can be whatever. If they are legally able to hire you from Ukraine, you will see that job opportunity. And talents, they're loving it because they say, there's no border anymore. And I'm really accessing job posting that I would never be able to access anywhere else. Mm, and, and I guess it, you're talking about this unique um, flex score feature that you have on your uh, on your platform, right? Can you talk more about this? What, what kind yeah. of feature? So what we also realize is because today posting, you know, a role and mentioning remote is more attractive than mentioning hybrid. So it does get you a lot of, of applicants. However, a lot on LinkedIn, for example, a lot of remote roles are not remote roles. You need to go to the office one day a week, two days a week, which is not remote. So because of that, we decided to only focus in fully remote positions. Of course, some of them, the company has offices, but you are not forced to go. You go if you want to. And using around 30 criteria, we are basically scoring the job postings. So, for example, if the company is fully remote anywhere in the world, they will have a better you know, uh, score than if the company is only hiring people in one country. If you have um, unlimited holidays, you will have more points than if you just have normal holidays um, and so on. So, we use around 30 flexible criteria to give a score to the, the job um, you know, posting and talents within the remote position, they can see the ones are much more flexible than others. Yeah, I guess that's very helpful uh, for, for job seekers uh, to have this, 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 this flexibility score, yeah? Mm. Uh, okay, sounds good. And you mentioned that recently you, um, you gained like 200,000 remote job listings, right? So that's, that's an incredible, in fact. It's an impressive milestone. My, my congrats with that. Uh, but let's, let's zoom in your clients, right? So your platform serves a wide range of companies from Fortune 500 like to emerging startups. From my Any company hiring remote workers. Yeah. Can you tell us more about the, the, your, your main users who benefits most from, from, from your job board? Yeah. Do you still have like a, your ideal uh, client profile in an ideal user profile probably? Can you talk more about this? So we're actually seeing two kind of customers. So as, as you probably understood, we are an aggregator. So we are aggregating between 15 to 20,000 new remote roles every week, which is a lot of volume. Um, and we have two kind of users. We have the big companies, Revolut, for example, you know, Amazon. Um, yes, Amazon does hire remote workers <laughs> because they, they are a client of us. Um, you know, Blablacar, uh, for example, these kind of companies, they have a lot of open positions and they are able to hire talents in several countries. Revolut, for example, can hire people in 50 different countries. When it comes to that, to hire people in several locations, the companies normally don't really know how to get a visibility in several countries at the same time. What I've been doing up to now is duplicate job postings on LinkedIn and of course paying much more. So with us, they can post one role and say, I want that role to be visible in Poland, Romania, Ukraine, Spain, and Portugal, for example. No need to duplicate. So that's one kind of customer, the, the big client with a big volume of, of hires. And we also see small companies, really small companies, which understand that hiring people remotely is a massive advantage and it's a massive way to attract good talents that just don't want to go back to hybrid companies, you know. Um, and these small companies with low employer branding, low reputation, um, and sometimes low budget, they just don't know where to post. LinkedIn is really expensive. And they don't want, again, to duplicate their job posting in several websites. They use one website, JobGather, and they say, okay, let's make it visible in the whole of Latin America, for example. Got it. And just to clarify, I'm really curious. So uh, 
as far as I understood, some portion of those uh, vacancies you just uh, aggregate from other platforms, maybe from Greenhouse or some other like uh, IKEA yeah. systems or your yeah. boards, large one, right? Indeed, maybe. Yeah. And you also have those premium like uh, vacancies, and those guys did just come to your platform and pay for job posting on your platform directly. So like a two, 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 two sides of it's, this you have. Yeah, right? it works a bit like Google Ads. They just pay uh -huh. for extra visibility mm -hmm. um, because if you have your role for free, it will be somewhere ah, okay, got it. between 200,000. If you are paying, your roles will you know, end up on top of the searches. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting business model. Okay, cool. Um, let's let's talk about like a trends and data. So with th that amount of like vacancies and data, you should have some cool like insights and maybe trends that you are like uh, noticing <laughs> on yeah. on a daily basis. So w which sectors or roles are seeing more action recently and are there any like uh, geographic like uh, hot spots where companies are ramping up, you know, remote hiring or perhaps scaling it back. So just any insights, any like uh, uh, data related <laughs> insights yeah. and information that that would be super helpful. Yes, yes, of course. Um, as we're m mentioning, you know, offline, um, the US uh, was the top country uh, offering remote work. It still is. The gap is getting smaller. But US, so US only um, remote job postings and US companies are for now still the ones offering the biggest, um, you know, volume of, of remote roles. Um However, we see countries like Brazil growing really fast. I would say South America in general, but Brazil is growing really fast. Eastern Europe is growing really fast. The Middle East is growing really fast. Countries like um, Germany, like the UK, for example, is growing really fast. Um, so, yeah. And just clarify, they, they, they're growing fast in terms of companies that are ready to hire globally yes. or in terms of talent that are looking for global opportunities? No, or uh, sorry. Companies offering remote work. Sometimes it could be limited to one country and sometimes it could be to several countries. Um, what, um, yeah, more data I can share with you is in terms of um, the roles listed on the website, yes, the majority is still tech, tech and product position, the majority, uh, but we see a lot of marketing positions uh, being available remotely now. Sales is growing really fast, customer service, um, operations, and we really see, so, um, tech roles is around 50% of, of the global number of, of roles that we have. And the rest um, is, is growing. In terms of talents, today we have um, a bit more than, you know, a million visits per month from 140 countries worldwide. 30% um, of the talents visiting the page are looking for tech roles. Then we have marketing. Then we have operations, customer service, and sales. This is the top five uh, profiles of people. So it's also interesting for companies to understand that remote work is not just for tech anymore. Anyone within a company wants to work remotely. One thing that we see is we have a lot of senior people. It makes oh. sense. They are usually the one with a house in the countryside, with a bigger house to work from home. Um, younger generation Sometimes they share a small flat and they want to have someone to learn with. And sometimes they're the one more keen to go to the office. Yeah, that's 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 really really insightful, frankly speaking. And basically, that's that's uh, exactly what we see on our end. So, like, uh, if we're talking about like two years before, two years from now, like a. It was like a more about tech roles, ninety five percent like a tech mm -hmm. roles. That's that's what we were doing at Globy. But at this point, yeah, we see that marketing and sales roles are growing, and yeah, 
that's that's uh, that's uh, totally correlates with, with what what we see on our end. Um, okay, so looking ahead, what are the f- uh, future maybe aspirations and and goals for Jobgazer? Uh, are there any like uh, features or developments that our audience should should be on the lookout for? Yes, so um, of course we want to have. 100% of the remote roles listed on Jobgather. As I told you before, we are already by far the largest inventory. We want to keep growing because what we want is wherever you are based in the world, we want to be able to offer you, um, you know, opportunities available from your country. So that's um, a first big target, of course. Um, and also what we are pushing a lot more is Today, when you are looking for a remote position, you have a lot of competition. I have companies I'm talking to, they can easily receive 2,000 applicants in two days, which is crazy. How do, how do you actually stand out? So we are working you know, for talents to a feature to actually help them stand out from the crowd and help them um, apply to the right position for them. Of course, If you are the one with the better skills, but not just the skills, if you are the one with the good work permit, because if the role is remote from the US only and you have a European passport, let's not waste your time, you know. Um, And uh, so, yeah, we're really working on on, on, on like certifying remote workers Mm -hmm. to make them more attractive, more visible you know, to the company and they can much more easily stand out from the, cr- from the crowd um, among this, this crazy number of applicants that we see today. Mm-hmm. And, and, and how exactly are you going to do this? If you're talking about tech roles, for example, you're going to uh, do some vetting process on your end, like as with call challenges and stuff like that, giving some score to, to those talent or you're going to automate this with AI help So just curious if you can Of course, it would be some automation. Um, we are not going to become a head-hunting you know, company. It would be some automation with tests you can take. It could be technical tests. It could be languages test. Um, it could be self-assessment. It could be personality test. Um, and uh, probably some manual, maybe checking. You will be able to record yourself in a short video uh, because that could also help you to stand out. Um, so yeah, it's going to be different features, probably different features depending on your role. If you work in finance or in tech, companies don't expect the same thing. Um, you know, uh, the ability to also check, um, you know, your work permit or your passport um, to really make make it easy for companies to say, okay, that person, I want to have an interview with that person, you know. Because today it's not the case. When you receive 2,000 talents, you physically can't check all of them. It's just impossible. That's 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 true. <laughs> that's 100% true. Uh, okay. Uh, so another thing that I would like to talk about is that I know that you're like uh, involved, basically you're a founder of another like a non-profit organization that basically helps uh, Ukrainian refugees, right? Uh, and I also know that this organization is acknowledged as one of the top five most helpful projects for Ukrainians with, with, with this, you know, war. Um, could you maybe share like uh, a few words about about this 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 very cool project and what was your initial motivation behind behind starting this this initiative? Sure. Um, yeah, it was an absolute crazy project. So back uh, back when the war started, um, I think it was a Thursday. Um, on a Friday, I was talking to uh, to my three co-founders. Um, I didn't mention that today we are four co-founders uh, at Jobgather. And like everyone, you know, it's terrible what's happening. What can we do to help? And um, Jobgather, before being a job search engine for remote positions, was a matching algorithm to help people find jobs. And it was probably midnight talking, you know, with, with, with my co-founders. Um, we thought, why don't we use our technology to help Ukrainian find jobs? And a minute later, we said, no, no, hang on. They don't need to find a job. They need to find accommodation. So let's use that, te- that, that matching technology to help them find accommodation. And it was a Friday night, and we thought, okay, we, 
just the one condition, we launched the website on Monday morning, so two days. Um, during the weekend, we worked nonstop, trying to get contact with Ukrainian people, authorities, building the website, so crazy stuff. On Monday morning, we launch. On Tuesday, we appear on the biggest business um, newspaper in France. On Wednesday, we launch on the Ukrainian side, and it became absolutely crazy. We went from four of us to 200 volunteers in like two weeks. Really hard to manage, going from four to 200 in two weeks, I can guarantee. Um, we appeared on 200 newspapers, um, live TV, radio in Ukraine, of course, in the UK, in Spain, in the US, in Israel, like really big, big, uh, you know, coverage. And what's really amazing, the website, it was so simple, was working. And if I remember correctly, so we launched on a Monday, on a Friday, we had the first, um, it was a woman alone, refugee, who arrived in Maastricht in the Netherlands in the family and uh, then it worked really well and after three months we estimate that we help around 40,000 Ukrainian people find accommodation across Europe um, we got uh, you know um, um, fundraise from the TED TED conference they, they gave us money um, to continue the project and uh, it was absolutely amazing because it was something that just so meaningful, you know, helping people. Um, and today we have three Ukrainian people working on the project. So with that money that we raise, we are paying these people. And um, of course, now, you know, it, it's a bit harder for refugees to find accommodation, host. But still, the website still works. We still have visits. Um, we still have families hosting people. We are now also helping uh, Ukrainian to connect with each other, to find jobs. We added the, the job section, and uh, yeah, it's an amazing project. I'm I'm really proud to be to be part of it. Yeah, that's 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 really awesome. That's really a cool initiative, and uh, I'm super grateful uh, for you guys that you're doing this. Um, okay, so probably my my last question: uh, what what advice would you give to global? entrepreneurs or those guys who would like to become like a global like a companies global first companies those leaders tech leaders who are just navigating this complexities of building international teams and would like to get a just better understanding if it is the right move for them what what ad, what what advice would would you give them just do it i mean uh, <laughs> just do it of course, it's not easy. It's, it's becoming easier because we have now a lot of really good tools to help, you know, with onboarding, with communication, with a lot of different aspects of, of a company. Um, if it comes just to hiring, imagine, you know, uh, the playground, if you are based in, I don't know, Berlin, you want to hire people in Berlin, that would be really difficult. There are a lot of companies also hiring people in Berlin. If you open up remote in Germany, that would be more easy for you. If you open to Europe, that will be even easier. And now talents, um, I think everyone needs to understand that talents don't want to be tied to a location anymore, don't want to be tied to a office anymore. They still want to be part of a company, they want to be part of a project, but COVID really helped all of us understand that work is not life. And we can have a much better balance today, spending more time with kids, with family, with friends, and also spending time with work. Um, so, yeah, my advice would be just do it. Before doing it, make sure it's uh, you are ready for it. And I think that's really important. And that's why all the companies who moved to remote, forced remote during COVID, they were not ready. They didn't have the right training for the manager. They didn't have the right tools. Um, and that's why, you know, in some cases it really failed. Be ready. Make sure you get the right tools before. Make sure your managers have a training on how to manage a remote team. Make sure you know how to onboard your people. Make sure you give them some budget to make sure they have a good setup at home. Maybe pay the co-working for them, but be ready before starting. But just don't, um, you know, uh, 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 don't, don't put that idea on the side. I think now any company should be able to have remote workers. You can have an office, but don't force people to go to the office. Make it attractive 
I always take the example of BlaBlaCar. BlaBlaCar is a unicorn in France, 800 employees. People have the choice to go to the office or not. However, 70% go to the office two days a week. No one is forced. But they make the office really not a place to work anymore, but a place to socialize, a place to communicate, a place to, to work together. And people are actually tempted to go and actually going, you know. Um, so that would be my advice. And just talk to companies who have done it before. I guess that, that's a very good one. So, <laughs> Alex, it, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. And thanks a lot for sharing your insights on international hiring and those cool initiatives that you're working on. And, of course, for this uh, help for this uh, th th that uh, you, you, you provide to Ukrainians. Um, yeah, we wish you and, and your, your projects all the best in your journey. So keep up the, the great work and take care. Thank you very much, Vitaly, for inviting me. It was really nice, and uh, I hope your, your listeners will enjoy it. Thanks a lot.